I was speaking with my Corsair rep and we were talking about upcoming projects as we often do. And I had mentioned that, you know, somewhere down the road, maybe three, four, five months, I wanted to do another white build. I usually do one of those a year on the channel. And I already had a really sick motherboard from Asus. I could use one of the new AMD 5000 series processors. And I got this really cool RTX 3070 white edition from Zotac, but the rest of the parts uh, kind of up in the air. And you know, I wasn't really worried about it. And he's like, I got you, bro. White AIO, white memory kit. White power supply, SSD that's black, but you won't see it. And the new white edition of their IQ 5000 X RGB chassis. So I guess we got another white build on our hands. Might as well get to work. You know, when you're looking to buy something online, you end up going through a bunch of reviews on websites and trying to figure out what's the best and what's worth your money. Luster is a free Chrome extension that finds and analyzes trusted expert reviews from sites like Wirecutter, video reviews from YouTubers like me, and even Reddit discussions so you can get a second opinion as you shop right on Amazon. Luster even provides personalized product recommendations for your budget and needs and compares prices from large retailers like Walmart and Best Buy. Shop smarter with Luster, check it out at the link below and start saving money today. Yes, this is a new set. Thanks for noticing. I moved over slightly from where my old set was and this is a much better layout. We're still working on some of the lighting and set decorations and stuff like that, but I hope you guys like it. You'll be seeing this on the channel moving forward. And if you want to continue to see videos from me, make sure that you hit that subscribe button down below. It definitely helps the channel out a ton. Also, consider following me on Twitter because, I don't know, why not? Now, this build did come together a lot faster than I initially anticipated. And big thank you to Corsair for making that happen. Now, they didn't sponsor this video, but they were able and willing to provide a lot of the components that we are going to use today. But because they didn't sponsor it, if something goes wrong, whew, you guys are gonna hear about it. But I don't anticipate that happening. And we do have some really excellent components from them and from others here. So let's quickly run down our parts list before we go putting everything together in the time lapse. Let's move left to right across this table here, or I guess as you guys are seeing it, right to left. We'll start with the RM850X White Edition from Corsair. Their RM series of power supplies are a standard at this point. They've been around for a long time. They're extremely reliable. This is 80 plus gold rated, fully modular, and comes with all white cables. So it's gonna go perfectly with our white themed build. The power supply itself is also white. Although I don't know that that's really gonna help us all that much. The storage we're gonna be using for this build is a one terabyte drive from Corsair, the MP600. This is a Gen 4 drive, which is something that we could take advantage of because we are using the AMD B550 platform here. So we'll get insane transfer speeds when I am loading up benchmarks or something. The memory for this build is a four by eight gigabyte kit of Corsair Vengeance RGB Pro white edition, of course. This is DDR4 3200. We might be able to get it up to 3600, but either way, 3200 speed is still a really solid way to build a Ryzen system. The H150i Elite Capellix cooler actually came out a few months ago. This is a new one though. This was just announced by Corsair. This is the white edition of the Capellix IQ cooler. It's a 360 millimeter all-in-one liquid cooler. It is not an Asetek based design, so it is a little bit different from a lot of the things that you might be seeing, but you have white fans, white radiator, white hoses, white block top. This is gonna go perfectly in the build. Zotac is one of the few companies that is making white GPUs right now, and this is their RTX 3070 Twin Edge white edition. It is is fairly compact, fairly power efficient, and I tested the regular non-white version of this 3070 at launch, and it was a really solid performer, and thermally was pretty good too. So this white version is exactly what we need here. I ran a poll on Twitter a few weeks ago regarding this build. I didn't really let you know what it was about, but I asked you guys what you would pair with an RTX 3070, and the answer was a 5600X but we just did the viewer's choice PC and that used the 5600X. So I, I didn't want to use it for two builds in a row. So instead we have a 5800X, which 
doesn't really get a whole lot of love, but is still a really great gaming CPU and will pair really well with the 3070. They are kind of on the same power level, and I think this will be a really good blend for both. Topping it off, we need a white motherboard. Now, while this board from ASUS is not entirely white, the B550A Gaming Strix board does still look really good. It's got white accents over the IO cover, along with silver and white across the rest of the board. I think it looks great, and the Strix boards from ASUS, especially their B550 Strix boards, I am a really big fan of. They hit a good price point, and they have a lot of features, and they look great too. And then we will be building in the brand new case from Corsair, the 5000X RGB white edition. Now, Corsair does have several different versions of this case, some with better airflow in the front, they come with a mesh front panel, but I wanted the glass front panel for this build, specifically for aesthetics. This is still supposed to be good for airflow. It's got some good airflow channels around the glass. I don't think it's gonna be quite as good as the mesh version as far as thermals go, but hopefully it's not that much different and it's going to look great with the rest of our components. So first build in the new studio. I'm pretty excited about it. I hope you guys are too. Let's time lapse the build and then we'll see how it comes out. So everybody, our build is done, our testing is done, all of our B-roll and fancy shots are done, and this is Ghost. Now, I don't often name my systems, in fact, I hardly ever do that, but I was having a conversation with Mike, the Manic Geek, uh, last night, and we were talking about some various things, and we ended up on the topic of little figurines and stuff inside of a case, and my initial reaction was I'm not really usually for that. But then I realized that I was building an all white system and I had a Funko Pop of the Game of Thrones character, Ghost, which is Jon Snow's direwolf. 
and I thought that that would actually go absolutely perfectly with this build, especially considering that we used hardware that's a little bit smaller than the interior of the case allows, and there was a lot of empty space on the right-hand side as a result. So in order to fill that up, I wanna put something down below, maybe a little accent piece, and the Ghost Funko Pop it is. And now as a result, the name of the system is Ghost. And wow, this is absolutely amazing to look at, especially from this angle. I really, really like when manufacturers include clear glass on their white cases especially. I understand some tint to the glass every now and then. I'm not a huge fan of the super dark tint on almost any case, but I understand tinted glass on black enclosures is certainly fine. But for white cases, the reason that you're usually building in a white case is because you really want to bounce all that RGB light and, and whatnot off of all the surfaces and get a really nice illumination inside. And having a pure, clear glass really allows you to see all of the little nuances and how the light plays off of all the surfaces inside of the build. Now, this isn't the whitest of white builds, mostly because of the motherboard. Now, the B550A Strix board is a little bit lower featured than some of the other B550 Strix boards on the market, but it still looks really good. And for a 5800X, it's gonna do the job just fine. Uh, I had absolutely no issues with it. I did have to update the BIOS before it would allow me to post, but once I did that, no issues at all. I was even running the memory at 3600 megahertz, and that was just like a two clicks and you're done kind of a situation. I didn't have to worry about adjusting the timings or anything like that. It actually just ran like that as soon as I set it in the BIOS. If you're not familiar with adjusting memory speed and you just wanna go with a one click overclock, the XMP or DOCP profile in the ASUS BIOS, again, will set this to 3200 megahertz and I'm sure that'll be just fine. Some notes about the case, the 5000X RGB case from Corsair. This is a really excellent case. I really enjoyed building in here. There are a lot of really cool little subtle features and ways that they facilitate the build. The initial cable shroud placement is tight. And when I was routing my 24 pin through the cable grommet, it actually was so tight that I couldn't fit the cable grommet in there anymore and I had to take it out. That's really not a big deal. The grommet is actually behind the cable cover anyway. But Corsair does provide you with so many things. Like, look at all of these cable straps that come in the package. I don't even know where I would put all of these cable straps, but they really want you to tighten down your cable management in the back of the case, even though there is a door back there that you can close and basically you don't have to see any of your cables at all. That's great because the back side of the case is tempered glass. Now you might want to say like, well, does that restrict airflow? And of course, they thought of that too. They put a mesh panel into the tempered glass along the back side of the case which I don't think I've ever seen any company do before. There are a lot of things that Corsair thought out in the construction of this that facilitates both airflow and great aesthetic value. Another one of those things is this. Now, when I first opened the package, I, I didn't read the instruction manuals and I pulled this out and I'm like, what the hell is this thing? But this is actually a piece that you could put at the front bottom of the shroud to allow you more space for custom loops. So if you wanted to put a pump rest combo down in front of your power supply or a thicker rad or maybe even a push pull configuration, this piece is gonna allow you a lot of room to do that while also closing off the end of the shroud so you don't have to see in and see all your cable mess. They also give you things like this, which is a USB 3.0 front panel 90 degree adapter. Now I couldn't use it in this build because of the positioning of the port on the motherboard. However, this is a very inexpensive piece and Corsair thought to include it in the packaging in case you need it when you're doing your build. This is another great little touch done by them. I also really like the dust filter that they put on top of the case. Now, I guess the dust filter itself is 
pretty standard. It's, it's a nice quality, but the magnets are super thick and hold to the top of the case really well. I've had builds where you put this in place on the top and no matter what you do with the case, if even you move it a little bit, this thing just goes flying. So it's really nice to see the Corsair thought it out and gave you a little bit more security when you're putting a dust filter on top. Another little thing that struck me while doing this build that might seem inconsequential to you guys, but actually was kind of a big deal to me, is that the pre-installed thumb screws for basically everything in this case weren't torqued down from the factory by some jacked robot and required an impact wrench to take out. I could actually use my thumbs and unscrew them just very easily. This is a little touch, but it means that you save time during your build. You don't need to go get a screwdriver or, you know, some kind of a drill or something to get your screws out before you can actually install your hardware. And the last little thing that I'll say about what Corsair provided to us, the RM850 was the perfect choice for a build like this as far as power goes. And because it's the white edition, they actually give you white zip ties in the box. That's a pretty cool little touch. I did all of our game testing at 1440p and ultra settings. Now, is this capable of 4K gaming? Certainly, in some titles. But I did test some higher end games like Cyberpunk, Metro Exodus, Crisis Remastered, and for those titles specifically, I think 1440p is a really good target. Plus, 1440p high refresh rate is where most people are migrating to right now. 4K gaming is becoming more popular, but is still such a small percentage of the overall gamer population. You're talking single digit percentages still that I'm not too concerned with that. I think 1440p for an RTX 3070 is a really nice sweet spot. We got some really good frame rates in games. Cyberpunk on ultra settings, ray tracing on ultra, DLSS on auto, we're running somewhere in the mid 50s. Now I was kind of running around the city and then doing some driving and causing some chaos and whatnot and frame rates stayed pretty much there, which I was happy about in a game like Cyberpunk, which doesn't need 160 frames per second to be playable. 40, 50, 60 frames per second in that game is still actually a really good experience despite all the weird bugs and stuff. Metro Exodus averaged 80.5 frames per second through the CAN benchmark. This again was on ultra settings. No ray tracing was enabled in that benchmark. Shadow of the Tomb Raider ran at 123 frames per second through the CAN benchmark. Doom Eternal, as Doom Eternal does, ran at like a million frames per second, so I'm not even going to show that. Ghost Recon Wildlands averaged 74 frames per second on average. That's ultra high settings at 1440p. And then Crisis Remastered was actually cracking that 60 FPS barrier, running in the low 60s while running through the first level with ray tracing on high. Temps and noise were also really good. Noise-wise, I really don't even hear anything, even though my head is right next to the case, so I wouldn't worry about that at all. The GPU got up to around 75, 76 degrees during a normal gaming load, which for a GPU with a cooler of this size seems just fine by me. It wasn't down clocking or anything like that. I was even able to get a mild overclock applied and clocks were sustained above 2000 megahertz for the most part. Our CPU was staying in the low 60s during a sustain load, which for an eight core chip is just perfectly fine. For a 360 millimeter radiator, we wouldn't even have to crank the fans up very high at all to maintain those temperatures, which again contributed to the really quiet operation of this system. So I guess that is another reason to call this system Ghost. Not only is it all white, the whites pretty much match, which makes me really happy. It's a very silent operator and it really kicks some serious butt at 1440 gaming for basically every title that I tested. What do you guys think of our all white January 2021 build? I think this came out great. Please leave a comment down below letting me know maybe what you would change or what your preferences are as far as a system goes. I'd love to hear from you guys. Thank you so much for watching. As always, get subscribed if you are not already, and I will see you next time.